It's the week of April 20th. It's time to see what Kickstarter has to offer in this week's Kickstarter Pickstarter. Final Girl is the newest solo game from Van Ryder Games. This is built around the system that they used for the game Hostage Negotiator, which was also a solo game. But the theme is very different. This one is inspired by horror movies, uh, different genres of horror movies, slasher movies, uh, where one person is being tormented by an evil murderer. In this case, it comes down to the final girl kind of movie you're probably familiar with. This simulates that by having you uh, take on that role and rolling dice and playing cards to try to move around a little map and save potential victims from this murderer before eventually facing them yourself. There are multiple different categories, different, uh, they call them feature films, that you can purchase uh, to inject new scenarios and new characters into your core game. Each one of those has a different setting. One is based around a carnival, for example, but you can mix and match uh, the different girls you play as, as well as the different settings, the locations, and the different killers. So there are a lot of potential different combinations, items you can find that can help you uh, to make things more interesting. I'm a big fan of Hostage Negotiator, that this is based on the system in part. Uh, you can watch my recent solo play that we streamed just the other week, uh, and I think I did another solo play years ago on our channel too. Uh, I think it's really fun, and I think that this theme that this horror genre really lends itself and it looks like it has more of a focus on again an actual board with a layout and a map uh, more of a sense of actually moving around from place to place discovering things as well as picking up items it seems like it really is going to be an evolution of that system that i think will hopefully improve upon it in a lot of ways now, um, yeah. you said that this is based on hostage negotiator so i'm just going to assume is it only solo player Yes, it is only solo player. They have no plans for any more than that. This is strictly a single player game, um, which I like. I mean, I think it's, I think it's good to focus in on something. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to see like, oh, another single player because Hostage Gladiator. It's sort of like, look, it's a single player game. We're going to do it well, which is yeah. nice to see. What, what was the title again? <laughs> final Girl. Final Girl. But there are other survivors, so it's not final. <laughs> well, eventually <laughs> she is going to be the final one because all the other people are either going to be killed or saved. <laughs> now, so I don't have idea. as much knowledge. I'm not, I'm just curious, since you have much uh, better knowledge with movies and stuff, do you recognize any tropes in there or like callbacks to famous movies or villains? Definitely. I mean, one of them is very Friday the 13th. Um, you know, there, there's, like I said, there's a spooky carnival. Not all of it is really like directly tied to a movie. There's one that's a, a poltergeist and you could, I'm sure, draw connections, but certainly it takes influence from a lot of different things, which is cool. And like I said, you can buy whatever you want and mix and match. The thing that's a little weird about this that I, I kind of like how they're doing it, but it is unusual, is the core box doesn't actually have a game in it. You need the core box to play. It has all the components that the all the scenarios share. But you have to also have at least one of these feature films uh, to go with it in order to actually play a scenario. So there isn't like one basic scenario that comes with the core. You can choose whichever one you want or multiple, but you have to get that core box. So the, the base pledge for this is $35. That includes the core box and one of your choice of the sets. Uh, but... It just it's just an interesting way to do it, I thought. That sounds a lot like, at least in my head, 8-Bit Box and Time Stories. I question how well this would work outside of the Kickstarter frame because or a convention. If you sell out of like all the packs and you just have cores left, they're sort of dead weight in the store. <laughs> yeah. So to speak. Yeah, right. It definitely. Uh, so I th and I think they probably are counting on doing more business of this through their own store. So because yeah, people people might not even know they might buy that box and not realize. Uh, I need what to play this game. <laughs> uh, but this way, you know, you don't get stuck if there's one genre you don't care about or one set. Uh, you True. really can mix and match whatever you want. So it's an interesting approach. Uh, take a look for yourself. It's called Final Girl. Deadlands is riding back in the town with a new updated core set. This Weird West RPG, as they'd like to call it, started back in 1996. And in fact, you may recognize some of the locales and terms they use from Doomtown because same world. 
This new corset is gonna revisit the world, but it actually is gonna take place a few years later than some of the major story beats from the previous RPG, uh, including the Civil War and some other crazy stuff. You can read about it, the quick summary on the Kickstarter page. So you can jump in whether you are a veteran of the series or whether you're new. They, of course, have tightened some of the rules like we've seen many RPG do recently and made some rules that make more sense and, of course, add some new flavor. The rules are based on the Savage World RPG rule sets. And in case you're curious that this core will have stuff for both the players and the what they call the GM, the Marshal. There's also actually going to be a campaign that you can also add on to this. It's titled the Headstone Hill Campaign. It's a horror-based one. From what I can tell, they've also got some pawns, the Deadland pawns. So if you're interested in Wild West with a bit more of a magic theme to it, this is definitely a cool one to pick up. I'm, I've experienced this from Doomtown, and I love the world and some of the cards in there, especially some of these factions. So this does sound like a really cool RPG to try out. Yeah, I mean, the Wild West is just a theme I like in general, but I also like, like you said, same thing that Doomtown kind of did where it, it injects this... Um, like like you said, weird, the weird West into it. You know, there's maybe some maybe some horror elements, some some things that aren't necessarily just your typical cowboy tropes. Right. That, that's always fun. And I mean, it's one of those things that we talked about a little bit on our podcast when we like when magic is not just in the fantasy, but sort of how it integrates into the modern day world and how people would do that. Like any RPG, there's a digital and a physical. You got $25 for the PDF of the core. You start at $45 for the physical version. There are add-ons like the campaign, the pawn. So see what you want to bring to your Wild West RPG. The Defense of Procyon 3 is a new sci-fi war game slash Euro game from PSC Games. This comes from the designer of Anachrony. He also did Kitchen Rush and some others. And the artist for the game is the same artist that did the games Adrenaline and Sanctum, if you're familiar with those. So I think it's a cool coming together of, of different folks uh, from the board game world. It is an asymmetrical game that you can play competitively or cooperatively. Uh, there, are, It's based around two different teams essentially you have humans and you have aliens and you know you're battling for control of the planet that kind of thing but it plays out very differently in that each team uh, has multiple people and each person has a very different style of play so you might be dealing with uh, a faction that has more of like deck building or bag building elements uh, there might be uh, a dice pool that you have to deal with you'll all have different cards with their own very unique specific abilities one group has to deal with a programming element in terms of how they move and attack as well. There's also two different boards. So uh, there's a space area where you have to worry about your ship combat. And then there's the Earth where you're dealing with getting resources and defending the Earth itself, the surface from alien invaders or if you are the aliens trying to take it over. Uh, asymmetrical games, something that we definitely always like. They maybe are harder to pull off, but it seems like, usually in my experience, the designers that go for them uh, know what they're doing. They're usually, if they're willing to take that leap, then they have a pretty good feel for how it's going to work. And I get that sense from this that it's, that it's going to work well. And it seems like the kind of thing that, we would like to play, and they pitch it as, interestingly, like I said, as a war game for the Euro gamer. So the <laughs> idea is it takes some of those war game elements, but, you know, makes them a little more palatable uh, for Euro gamers. There's a minimal amount of luck in this, uh, maybe a little more s structured rules and things, uh, but I like the way that it's laid out. I like the way that it looks from what I've seen so far. No, that definitely sounds interesting, and yeah, you're absolutely right. When asymmetrical works, it's so much fun because usually what happens is you'll play a faction or whatever, and once you finish it, you'll be like, man, that was pretty fun, but I'm really curious how that faction works. And even if you don't do very well with the faction, there could be this thing like, oh, okay, I made the mistake because I didn't know that they work in a way of like they need to put sing uh, sigils down on the board or deck building and now I know how they work I want to try that again there's mm -hmm. it, it really brings replayability into the game yeah, interestingly, they, uh, they, you know, there's four different rule books essentially for you to learn for each faction. <laughs> but they say that at least for your first game, you don't really need to know what the other groups are doing. I don't know 
how, that may not be true if you really are trying to do their best to strategize, uh, but hopefully for newer players, that makes it less intimidating. Uh, you can get your hands on this game for around $100 USD, so it's a big one. There's miniatures, there's all kinds of stuff in it. Take a look at the page. It's the Defense of Procyon 3. Back in 2010, game designers James Ernest and Mike Selinker released Lords of Vegas, which is a game all about building Vegas back from scratch. It also had one expansion called Up, which is all about building multiple levels to your casino. But this game has been hard to find since then. They have gotten the rights back, however, and are now releasing a new Kickstarter for its 10th anniversary, which will also include a new expansion and some deluxe upgrades. The new expansion, titled Underworld, brings sort of that mob feeling to your casino so you can have fixed dealers maybe some uh, loan sharks that could mess up other players that kind of sort of seedy business model and of course deluxe pieces are now going to be printed including new chips and whatnot and for those who missed out you'll be able to get the base game and up as well so this could be a chance to now be able to get back into the game or start the game yeah this is one of those games that i feel like we all I always see it at conventions like either just in a board game library. Yeah, all of, or uh, or at a store or, or wherever. And just I think it was just before like we just missed out on this one. It was either it came out before we really got deep into board games and it just was one of those games that never popped up on the table for us. Uh, but this seems like a good opportunity, like you said, to, to jump back into it and get a feel for it. And it's nice to see any time a company like breathes new life into one mm -hmm. of these classic games. That's fun. Well, in particular, as according to them, since we were out, I didn't know, but up seemed to be hard to get. So it's sort of nice that you can maybe actually get that expansion you've been dying to add to your collection. That's a plus. Now, if you do have everything, the new expansion Underworld is, is sort of the start at $24. But I should mention that they have a $1 tier pledge level for if you're not sure if you're going to be able to back this game because we're in very uncertain times, that you can pledge there. They'll keep you updated. And they said they'll make sure you, they have a game for you if you're able to buy it later on. Game publisher World Shapers has a new museum-themed game for us called Curator's Collection Conundrum. In this one, you are museum curators, and you are attempting to build the best museum that you can. So you have tiles, and as the game goes on, you'll be collecting those tiles and building out your museum in different ways. You'll be receiving contract cards, which will tell you what shape they would like you to build your tiles in, sort of a, in a puzzle-like Tetris-style way. And then once you have filled those rooms with different objects, then you have completed that contract in order to get points. What I think is really interesting about this game is the way that you take your actions. You have different employees, and those employees are represented by tokens. And when you use an employee's action, you flip the token over, and on the other side is a different employee. So you won't have access to that action again until you flip that token back. If you have two of the same employee type showing at once, then you can flip both of them on a turn and take a more powerful version of that action. Mm -hmm. So you're waiting to maybe use that at a specific time, wait until it's more powerful, and you also have to, you know, strategize and figure out when you're going to have access to certain actions or something that I would like is not having access to all of your actions at once. So it narrows down your field of options a little bit and forces you to make your decisions a little bit quicker, maybe. Seemed like a different kind of a spin on a museum game that sometimes we talk about it isn't just set collection. There's also the aspect of building out your museum and seeing how that looks once the game is over. And like I said, that action mechanic, I think, sounds like it'll really make this one unique. That definitely sounds interesting, though. I imagine when you're looking for that one employee not keeps not showing up, you're like, where the hell is Gary? Is he still on a coffee break? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That it's it's Gary the archaeologist, I bet. <laughs> God damn it, one. Gary. Yeah, he's the worst. Uh, you can check this page out right now. As of this recording, uh, they're still in their early bird phase for $38. You might be able to get in on that. You'll see how much it costs in the long run if you make it late. But it's called Curators. Those are the picks we have for you this week. We got some interesting ones, whether you want to role play in a weird West world or you want to try to build up a museum or maybe just do some very asymmetrical combat in space. Yeah, all good options, I think. Let us know in the comments. What are you looking at? What are you backing? Uh, Final Girl, definitely my 
most favorited pick of this oh, show. Yeah. I mean, as a big fan, as a solo game, and also from a company that's already made a great solo game you love, it seems like it's a good choice. And if you're curious what it's like, I mean, watching the last stream is you seeing you play that hostage negotiator was amazing. It's just the ups and downs. Okay. It is a crazy time. It's a crazy time. A lot of luck, but uh, we'll see how this one changes things. It's got more stuff going on. Anyway, talk to us in the comments, and we will see you guys in the very near future. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this was Kickstarter Pickstarter. Here's an idea. Support our Patreon or like and subscribe to this channel for more. Subscribing gives you a plus two to your charisma stat. 